Millings, why I cry, MGTOW, till I die. What's going on, your man, Lil Millings, why I cry, MGTOW, till I die. I want to give a shout out to the time, MGTOW versus what's going on, daddy, what's cracker lacking. So, um, I think I'm going to link, link the video in the description box below. I just got finished watching uh, YouTuber O'Shea Duke Jackson's video called, uh, entitled, Dear Black Man, Are You Afraid? And in this video, he addresses uh, African-American uh, men in the African-American community and if they're afraid to take the stance, uh, uh, he asserts that some uh, African American men that he has been going back and forth with um, uh, may be afraid because they don't show their face in the videos or they don't do the quote unquote work uh, in order to help the African American community, yet at the same time, feel that they have the right to criticize the African-American community. Uh, and so O'Shea, in his video, what I got from his video, uh, and I stopped it at uh, 9 minutes and 22 seconds, even though it was 12 minutes and 38 seconds long, simply because I'm like, I got to do a video about this. Um, so I see him, I see his his assertion up to this point is that if you don't do the work, then you don't have the right to criticize. Now, the issue, like I've always said, I've always, I've always stood on a, on a stance that as individuals in America and as Americans regionally and nationally, we're Americans. We have different colors. We come from different ethnic backgrounds, but regionally we're Americans. And what this means to me is that um, a problem in America cannot get fixed in a vacuum. There is, there is the African American community, Chinese American community, whatever, <coughs> excuse me, whatever predominant ethnic group. Uh, cul-de-sac or uh, whatever the word is, uh, the, whatever dominant uh, ethnic group that uh, stays in a, in a certain area is not geographically isolated in that area. Why? Because I can go into a Chinese community without a passport. I can go into a Mexican community without a passport. I can go into any community in the United States without showing ID or there there are no gov there are no um, jurisdictional borders that that demarcate the the ending of one community and the beginning of another. All we see are and what I said before in my one of my other videos are businesses I'm gonna repeat this businesses that show you that you are in an area that people who are in um who are involved in commerce in that area are a particular ethnic group. Why do I say this? I'm saying this because the work that needs to be done in the African American community cannot just be done by African Americans simply because the African American community is not a monolithic or, or a, a mono geographic area. Uh, you'll there African Americans like almost all Americans are separated from each other by socioeconomics and what you what you'll tend to find on average in an African American like I like the word my man um, let's be frank uses amalgam meaning that a globulous <laughs> <laughs> group of people but but just particularly in a particular area what you're going to find is you're going to find what i call and i believe i've done a video on this before um the mitchell villians versus the heights niggas so where i in the district uh in the dc maryland virginia area we have a place called mitchellville where a lot of uh, prominent and wealthy african-americans live and and they have uh, these uh, 
it's it, it, it's some place that you might look to find Michael Eric Dyson or Cornell West living. Two car garages, uh, boats, um, Lincoln Navigators, these big funeral cars, if you will. And then you have the poorer black community who tends to live in what I call the Heights, places and cities with the name Heights after it, District Heights, Capital Heights, Hillcrest Heights. Places like this are where the poor African-American community lives and resides. Oh, well, I just was, uh, that was redundant. Anyways, I'm not gonna edit it out, I'm gonna continue. The issue here is that the economic shocks and the values that the Mitchell Villians have and the Heights niggas have are two different things. Having a neighborhood that is based on home ownership and those values signify a degree of future or forward thinking in order to maintain or to want to create or to build something, you have to have a vision for what that thing will be. And in order to have a vision, in, in order to have a vision for what that thing will be, you must have some concept of the future. And in order to have concept of the future, you must believe and probably more likely subconsciously think that the probability of you living to enjoy or having children that will enjoy that future has to be at a certain level for you to want to invest in it today. This is the theory of uh, the net present value. Um, I believe I might have covered it, but um, I can do it another time if I did. Any person that wants to take on a project must know that whatever risk they're going to take in the future and whatever reward they're going to reap in the future when they bring those uh, future benefits and costs to the present the present day that it must be greater than or equal to zero they they can't lose anything so what affects an individual's concept of the future well if you live in an area where it's high in crime where the probability of getting gunned down is high, the probability of being a victim of crime is high, the probability of living next to an industrial area with pollutants is high, the, the probability of going to a shitty school is high. These all increase the risks of the investment. These decrease the returns of the investment. And therefore, a logical-minded person would say, I would not take on a project in this area. So what we have here is we have a split. And it's like this in every community. There is a poor, a working, the working middle class tends to be, um, those, those places tend to be the most integrated. And then you have the very wealthy areas. But one thing that I see a lot of in these quote unquote black talks are talks about, it's finger pointing. Um, the African American woman points to the African American man as he is the one to have left her with a child and therefore contributing, excuse me, Sipping on my tea. And contributing to the denigration and the deterioration of the African American community. The African American man points to the African American woman and says, You are to blame because you are getting pregnant by these thugs. You know that the Negro is no good, but yet and still, you let him impregnate you anyway. And you are to blame. So the question is, because he asks black men if they're afraid. So 
I don't think that's the question that needs to be asked. I think the question that needs to be asked is, Mr. Black Man, is it worth it to you to undertake this project? That's the question that needs to be asked because fear is, um, is a qualitative, is a qualitative aspect of risk. It's not quantitative. Uh, a, fe a fear of something happening and the risk of something happening come from the same root. It's uncertainty. But the difference is feeling, fear is a feeling. It, I can't measure it. Like, um, there could be a dog coming down the street. And because I'm familiar with dogs and I like dogs, I might not be fearful of that dog. Now, there is a risk that the dog could bite me, but because of either previous experience or my predisposition to dogs, I don't believe that the dog is going to bite me. I don't believe the chances of the dog is going to bite me, and therefore, I am not as fearful of the dog. But someone else who, who's been bitten before or who's had bad experiences with dogs might see the dog coming down the street and be fearful of that dog. But that doesn't tell you what the risk, the real risk of that dog biting you is. What tells you what the real risk of that dog biting you is, finding statistics on people who have been bitten, find, looking at the type of dog it is and what area you're in and looking and seeing, geez, who else has been bitten in this area by this type of dog? And then you run the numbers and that will give you the probability that that dog will bite you. And then you have to take the probability that the dog will bite you and multiply that probability that the dog will bite you by the costs that you will incur as a result of being bitten by the dog.